Welcome to FIRST Canada's FTC training series. Today, we will cover the basics of autonomous by using an encoder. Our robot needs to be able to move without someone driving, giving continuous input. We call this mode autonomous because the robot is automatically moving. If we precisely tell the motor how to move, then we can control the position of our robot and we can do the basics of this through encoders. Encoders tell our code the position of the motor through ticks. If we tell our motor to go to a certain position, then it will spin at a given power until it reaches that position. An example of this would be setting the position of our motors to three rotations forward from its current state, and then powering the motors to full speed. The robot will accelerate and then slow to a stop once it reaches that specific location, three rotations from its previous state. By the end of the lesson, we will make our robot drive forward and then turn completely on its own. We will first create a new file called auto and leave the settings blank. Above the class declaration, we add the line at autonomous, meaning that it is an autonomous operator mode, then name equals auto, setting the name that it will show in the phone. We also want our autonomous to extend linear op mode. Although regular op mode can be used, this is easier because we want our code to run once instead of looping over it. Now we will add at override run op mode, as this function is inherited from linear op mode and will be where our code runs. Next, we will initialize our motors. We first declare our left and right motors like before, and then initialize them using hardware get.map. Unlike in the iterative op mode, in linear op mode, both the initialize and running code go into the same function, run op mode. Next, we will set the mode to stop and reset encoders. This resets our encoders to the zero position, so we have a baseline to work from. Like last time, we also reverse the right motor, so the drive wheels don't spin in opposite directions. Finally, we are going to declare two new variables called left posts and right posts. This will store the current positions of our left and right encoders. We then initialize them both to zero, since our motors have not moved. Next, we add the line wait for start. Once this is run, any code after will not be executed until the match is started, much like the code in our loop function. In order to move our robot forward, we want to create a function or a command that will take the distance we want to turn our motors by and speed and execute it. To reuse code and simplify it, we will create a function. This will be a private void, since it has no return value and should only be accessed in this class. Inside the brackets, we set the parameters that it requires to be executed, left target, right target, and speed. The first step inside the function is to add the target positions to the actual positions. This changes where the motors need to be by that amount. Next, we set the target position to both of the motors and then set the mode to run to position. Setting the target position and run mode puts our motors in a state where they will continue running until the encoders reach the target position and stop. However, they do not change speeds automatically, so we need to do that ourselves. Once the position is set, we then set the powers of our motors to the speed double that is a parameter to our drive function. They will run at this speed until they reach the target position. They will stop automatically, but we will need to prevent any other code from running until they reach the target position. To prevent this, we will create a while loop which will run as long as the conditions are true. Inside the loop, we want to make sure the op mode is still active with op mode is active, and then make sure both the left and right motors are busy, meaning that they are still moving towards their target. Inside, we just run idle, as we do not need to do anything. Now, to test our function, we will run drive twice in our run op mode function after the wait for start function. The first one will drive forward by moving the motors forward 5,000 ticks. You can play around with this amount to get a better sense of distance, but for now, this is a convenient number and is less than a foot. We will also set the speed to 0.25, so it moves pretty slowly. Next, we will turn the robot by setting the left to positive 1,000 and right to negative 1,000. 
the motors will move in opposite directions and therefore turn. We will once again set the speed to 0.25. When we run the code, now the robot first drives straight forward and then turns. Having a strong autonomous and a good understanding of encoders is very important for making your robot perform well and autonomous. Today, we covered the basics of encoders and controlling your robot autonomously. It is important to explore and test the code we wrote today to further develop your understanding of autonomous and create a good foundation. Create a practice course and have your robot drive through it autonomously.